The extent to which rigging is simple or complex, safe or unsafe, depends on whether you have considered certain factors, such as weight and tension, and how these factors affect the job you're going to do. During this program, we'll look at some of the forces exerted by conductors. We'll also look at how safety can be factored into the job when you're rigging. After that, we'll look at how these factors come together while rigging arrangements are planned for a job in the field. Now, in line work, there are two basic reasons for rigging. One is to lift and maintain control of a load, and the other is to maintain safe minimum clearances between you, the load, and equipment that may be energized. One factor you should consider when rigging is how much load or weight needs to be moved. The types of loads you'll encounter can be divided into two groups, static force loads and dynamic force loads. A static force load is one whose weight remains fixed. Examples of static force loads include transformers, switchgear, and poles. The weight of a static force load can generally be found by looking at data plates or charts that list typical or average weights. For example, the weight of this transformer is 350 pounds. The weight of a dynamic force load may not be as easy to determine. This is because the weight of a dynamic force load varies according to different conditions. One example of a dynamic force load is the weight exerted by a conductor. The weight exerted by a conductor will vary with changes in conditions such as tension, sag, wind, temperature, line angles, and span length. The weight exerted by a conductor will also vary as it is moved from a stationary position. Being able to determine the weight of a dynamic force load is an important step in any job where rigging is used. Once you have determined the dynamic forces involved, you can rig for the job safely, efficiently, and within the limitations of the equipment available. As an example, let's look at a tangent pole and determine the weight exerted by a conductor while it's supported by an insulator. We'll use a diagram to illustrate the explanation. This is a simplified illustration of a pole line. There are three poles numbered one through three and two spans of conductor. The spans are labeled span A and span B. The insulator on top of pole two is supporting a portion of the conductor weight in span A and a portion of the conductor weight in span B. The lowest points of conductor sag are at mid-span, so the weight supported by pole two lies between the lowest point of conductor sag in span A and the lowest point of conductor sag in span B. One way to determine the weight exerted by the conductor on the insulator on pole two would be to measure the distance between the lowest points of conductor sag and multiply the distance times the conductor weight per foot. But since it may be difficult to determine the lowest point of sag in each span, a simpler method can be used. The approximate weight exerted by the conductor can be found by using this formula. Exerted conductor weight equals span A plus span B divided by two times the conductor weight per foot. The exerted weight is approximate because the formula doesn't account for the additional conductor length required to make up the sag in the line. However, this difference, which may be negligible, can be added in when the sag is known. In this illustration, span A is 250 feet and span B is 300 feet. 250 plus 300 equals 550. 550 divided by 2 equals 275. So the insulator on top of pole 2 is supporting approximately 275 feet of conductor. The next step is to determine the conductor weight per foot. This can be found by referring to a table that lists conductor characteristics. In this illustration, the conductor is 477 MCM ACSR. By looking at this chart, we can determine that it weighs 655 pounds per 1,000 feet. So, by dividing 655 pounds by 1,000, we find that the conductor weighs 0.655 pounds per foot. Now, we can multiply the approximate conductor length by the conductor weight per foot. 275 times 0.655 gives an answer of 180.125.
which means that the conductor is exerting approximately 180 pounds on the insulator on top of pole two. So the approximate weight exerted by a conductor can be determined by adding span A to span B, dividing by two, and multiplying the result by the conductor weight per foot. Now, there are other factors in addition to weight that you need to consider when you're rigging to move a conductor. We'll take a look at some of these factors in the next part of the program. But before we move on, take the time to read the text material for this part of the program.